just saw a, a great, great race in New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. Let, me, let, me let me repeat, repeat that. that. We just saw a great race at New Hampshire. What is going on? What is going on here? Yo, what is up everyone? My name is Jekyll from NASCAR on MDK. Welcome back to the episode of the Inside the Lines post-race show. Kevin Harvick finally breaks, uh, I don't know, however long winless streak, but he finally scores his first ever win of the season at New Hampshire. Goes back to back, and wow, what what a race. For New Hampshire, that was the best New Hampshire race I've ever seen in quite some time, and that says a lot. So yeah, we're going to get right into it. Going to be reading off my notes as usual. Um, the whole weekend was chaotic. We had five drivers go to backup cars. We had Alex Bowman go to actually, he was racing Jimmy Johnson's backup car because he already wrecked his backup cards. Kind of confusing, you already know what it, how it goes. William Barn, I believe, also had to go to a backup car. Denny Hamlin had to go to a backup car. Uh, Ryan Newman had to go to a backup car, and I believe another driver did, but I forgot who it was. But yeah, it was five drivers that had to go to the back. Uh, and that sort of indicated that, that would be a crazy race. So we started off with Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. Keselowski won the pole. Uh, Kyle Busch was outside in second. Kyle Busch was able to go out to the lead, but with four laps to go in stage one, Keselowski was able to reel Kyle Busch back in. Um, and we actually saw a pretty good battle for the lead. We saw uh, Keselowski perform a, uh, get underneath Kyle Busch. Busch crossed uh, over. Kislowski throughout for one or two laps or so. Then we saw Mark Trick Jr. get into the mix, and we saw it could potentially be maybe a three-way battle for the lead, but Kislowski was able to get by uh, Kyle Busch with, I believe, around 37 to go, and Trick was able to follow Sue in second place. Three laps to go in stage one, we saw our first caution of the day. It happens with the number three car, Austin Dillon, blew a right front tire, made pretty hard contact with the outside wall. Uh, tires were surprisingly not an issue as I thought they would be an issue depending on how the weekend started uh, Tires were not really that bad of an issue, but it did affect some drivers uh, that would not be the end of Dylan's problems He would have more issues later on in the race. We start with lap 50 uh, Ricky Sands Jr. Stayed out on pit road uh, to take the lead. However, he got a horrible restart. Kyle Busch would get underneath Ricky Stenhouse make it three wide and would take the lead from Stenhouse off of turn two with Eric Jones in second and the 10 car of Eric Amarola in third. Austin Dillon would then blow another right front tire. However, this time, no caution. Everything still kept on going. And Kyle Busch would win stage one with Daniel Suarez passing Jimmy Johnson on the final lap, on the, on the final stage lap, on the final turn to take 10th place away from uh, Johnson so Suarez gets the final playoff point or stage point stage one We saw some pretty good racing, you know around mid-pack, you know We didn't see aside from that battle between Kozowski Bush and Turex. I was really it mid-pack We saw some side-by-side -side racing some good battles. So yeah stage one started out pretty well now stage two started out Not so exciting, but then later on it really did for some playoff contenders Kyle Busch was leading, but then later on, I believe maybe around halfway in stage two, Daniel Suarez, who needed to have a good run if he wanted to make into the playoffs, got loose underneath Daniel Suarez in turns one and two, slid up, hit the left rear of Daniel Hemrick, spun Hemrick around as well as Suarez himself, and Hemrick hit the outside wall. Pretty good damage to the front of that race car that ended his day. He would finish dead last, which is, I believe, 37th place for this week. Now, the reason why Suarez got loose and hit Hemrick was because the nine car, Chase Elliott, was leaking fluid. Uh, he reported there was no water pressure coming from the car, and it also revealed that a, a belt was missing from the car. I forgot exactly what type of belt it was, but apparently it broke, caused fluid to leak from Chase Elliott's car that caused uh, Suarez to get loose, slid up, and hit Daniel Hamburg. So it wasn't really Suarez's fault, it was just a reaction from what happened to Chase's car. Then on pit road, Eric Jones, another driver who really needed a good day, uh, came out on pit road, but the issue was Alex Bowman and his third car, that's not even really his car, wanted to come into pit row. They both made contact and Eric Jones had to come onto pit row, I believe around two or three times to repair the damages to the right front of uh, his car. We start with 34 laps to go in stage two. Kevin Harvick um, started as a race leader. However, Kyle Busch took the lead again from Harvick on the back straightaway. Kyle Busch had a really good car in stage one and two, but 
it didn't really help for him at the end of the race, but uh, yeah. Caution will then come out with 13 laps to go in stage two. This happened between Eric Jones and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Stenhouse, another driver, needed to have a good run. Uh, Jones and Stenhouse made contact, I believe, off of turn four. Then I believe on that same lap later, or at least the next lap, coming off of turn two, uh, Stenhouse cuts a tire, slams the outside wall. Pretty good contact as well that ended his day. And he said, I don't have it here, but I believe he said in an interview that basically implying that uh, Jones better watch out for Stenhouse, you know, in case he might affect Jones's playoff chances. So it was just a lot of drama in terms of playoffs. And oh my God, it was just crazy. For a New Hampshire race, this was a crazy race. Very fun, but very crazy race. Jimmy Johnson, Alex Bowman, and Ryan Newman, they all stayed out to get some stage points because at least with the uh, Bowman, he had to start in the back. So at least he tried to get some track position. Johnson and Newman, they needed points. They were right right on the on the cut line, so they needed stage points. That's why they stayed out. Uh, it restarted with eight laps to go, however. Coming to seven to go, the 14 and the 19 car made contact after a three-wide battle. The 14 car slid up into Martrix Jr. They both slide, made contact with the wall, and brought out another caution that set up a restart with two or three laps to go. And Eric Amarola really made, had a, he did a very scummy restart. He really break, it looked like he just break checked the entire outside lane. And what happened was that Byron was behind him and so was Jimmy Johnson. So when Eric Amarola break checked, Bowman, uh, Byron break checked, and then Johnson break checked, but he received real good damage because what happened was uh, a pump or something fell off of the car and Johnson dropped like a rock. Um, in heading into turns three and four, Johnson went from, I believe, I believe maybe six or seven to like 21st. And what happened was that he reported that he lost power steering because of that contact made with Eric Amarola. That's not good because uh, Johnson entered in this race 10 points above the cut line in 15th place, I believe. And with that power steering problem, he came out 12 or 13 laps down and he would end up being 15th or 16th uh, in place below the cut line 18 points behind so Johnson really out of someone's mistake I mean, I don't know what Eric was thinking. He really just break checked the entire field um, NASCAR gave him a warning. I would have been a lot more harsh, but that's because I'm a Jimmy fan So I pr you probably shouldn't take my uh, take my opinion with a grain of salt But yeah, very scummy research by Eric Amarola and uh, yeah, uh, Eric Amarola would end up winning stage two so uh Nice job, Eric. And around the mid-20s because he made contact with the 42 car of Kyle Larson on that last restart that caused a right rear tire rub. So he had to come on the pit road, fix that. That's why he started around the middle portion of the pack. And that is where really he stayed. I mean, he was able to move up, but that's where really his dominance ended because Bush, in my opinion, did not, if I'm not uh, mistaken, did not lead a single lap after he was restarted in the middle of the pack. So that really, really hurt Kyle Busch's chances of winning this race. Then a caution will come out on lap 216, I believe it was. Uh, Kyle Busch got loose entering one and two, hit the wall and brought out a caution. Now the reason why I say that in like a sort of irritated way was because the way he hit the wall, it was like a little tap. Okay, it was, it was a bit harder than that, but he kept going and we were all wondering why in the world did he did NASCAR bring out a caution, but it did. That set up a restart. Kyle Larson, who I believe was around the ninth or tenth place, made a three wide underneath Alex Bowman. However, entering turns one, or turn one, Larson got loose, hit Bowman. Larson spun, somehow did not hit anybody else. Excuse me, but made some slight contact with the outside wall to bring out another caution. Denny Hamlin restarts with his 77 laps to go, and that's when really everything, nothing happened until 36 laps ago when Kyle Larson again cuts a tire and slam into the outside wall and turns one and two very hard to bring out the other caution, and that would end his day. Now, Kyle Larson, he's not in the bubble, but he needed to still have a good day and wanted to at least maintain his points position. That would hurt him quite some bit in the points. He ended up going straight to the garage and that was the end of his day. Restarts with 29 laps to go. Kevin Harvick was the leader and Denny Hamlin moved into second place. And the interesting part about this was I believe was Kevin Harvick was on two uh, fresh tires to Hamlin's four fresh tires. And we saw a really good battle. Hamlin just slowly closing in on Harvick and we're on three to two laps to go. Lap traffic came into play. That allowed Hamlin to be right on Harvick's bumper and on the final lap, Hamlin gave Harvick a huge bump entering into one, but somehow Harvick was able to maintain his car, keep it under control, and they were side by side for the race lead. Harvick on the outside, 
and uh, Hamlin on the inside, and I believe Harvick was able to get by Hamlin, entering three. Harvick goes down to that yellow line on the inside lane. Hamlin goes up top. Then Hamlin and Harvick make contact coming off of four, and that allowed Harvick to get by Hamlin, or is to clear Hamlin, and Harvick was able to score his first victory of 2019. Let's take a look at the race results here. Kevin Harvick wins with Denny Hamlin in second. Eric Jones, great run for him in third. Ryan Blaney in fourth. Matt Benedetto scores his, I believe that was his first top five, or second top five of his career. What a run for him. Started seventh, finished in fifth. Great weekend for him in that number 95 team. Martin Trick Jr. in sixth. Ryan Newman in seventh. I, the reason I didn't talk about him, I'm surprised I didn't talk about him. Um, he had a cylinder go down or something broke on his car. He was a lap down and was able to rebound to really have a really good points day. Come home in seventh place. Great ever for that number six car. I talked about him in my mid-season predictions. I, that Newman has surprised me a lot. That's why I gave him a B, and I'll even bump that up to a B plus because the fact that he was able, in Roush equipment, he was able to go a lap down after a problem broke in the car and rebound to a top 10, great job. That's all I can say. What a job by Newman and that number six car team. Kyle Busch in eighth was able to rebound, but again, as soon as he got to the middle of, of to mid-pack, that was really the end of Kyle Busch's chances of winning. Joe Logano in ninth, kind of surprised. He was very quiet. He wasn't inside the top five, or at least didn't make much noise this season, but nice top 10 run for Lugano. Kislowski started on the pole, finished in 10th. Eric Amorola, 11th. William Brown in 12th. Nice run for him after he had a backup car. Started in mid-20s. 12th place is a good effort for him. Fulminar, 13th. Alex Bowman. You know what? For the weekend they've had, a 14th place. I'm pretty sure that 88 team will take a 14th place. For the week they had was just abysmal. So I'm pretty sure Bowman will be all right with a 14th place run. Chris Bush in 15th. Ty Dillon 16th. Michael McDowell 17th. Kirk Bush 18th. Very surprised to see him after he won last week. 18th place. Kind of a shock to see him that far down low. Daniel Suarez did not need to have this run. He needs points. And we're going to get into the point standings a little bit later on. He's 18th. Uh, or uh, 19, excuse me, Clint Boyer in 20. So now we're gonna get into some of the notables here. Chase Elliott, um, as I talked, as I said earlier, he had a leak, fuel leak. Hood was up on the car. He finished 29th. Jimmy Johnson with that power saving problem, he would finish in 30th. Another driver that needed a really good points day. Austin Dillon 32nd. Kyle Larson 33rd after that crash. And yeah, Ricky Sounds Jr. 36th and Daniel Hembrick 37th. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, the uh, playoff grade. Now this is coming from at NASCAR score. This is not confirmed. So uh, if there are any problems with it, don't blame me. Blame this guy. Eric Jones now 14th in the point stand, point, or playoff grade. 68 points above Jimmy Johnson. Great run for Eric Jones. Clint, uh, Ryan Newman, I mean, what a run for him. He's uh, 509 points. Um, let me repeat that. Uh, he is seven points below uh, Eric Jones in 15th place. Clinton Boyer holds the final spot in 16th. Jimmy Johnson, the first one out, 15 points below the cut line, tied with Daniel Suarez uh, and uh, Paul Menard and Ricky Stanley Jr., 19th and 20th. So that is going to be a very, very interesting uh, next six races between Johnson, Suarez, Newman, Jones, as well as Boyer. Um, what I give this race? I mean... This was a really good race. I can't really give a rating, like, I guess eight out of seven and a half, maybe eight out of 10, but this was a really fun race. I will say, you know, parts of stage two and huge part of stage three were nothing, nothing happened. So that's why I, I believe seven and a half is a good rating, but this was a really good New Hampshire race. I was not looking forward to New Hampshire. Well, okay. After Saturday, I was somewhat interested in, in New Hampshire because of all the chaos that took place in qualifying and practice, but yeah, this really shocked me how good this race was. So, uh, yeah, I mean, good job, New Hampshire. You earned yourself a W for this one. But now we're going to be heading to Pocono. So, um, it should be fun. <laughs> I don't know. Ever since NBC took over, we have had some great races. Kentucky was a bit of a downer, but the finish was really good. I mean, actually, every finish, except for Daytona, we're not going to really count that. But every finish that reached to its end was an amazing finish. And every race, except for really Kentucky, was a really good race. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't want to say I'm excited for Pocono, but with NBC, ever since NBC took over, the races have been much better. Who knows? But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching the NASCAR NDK Inside Lines Post Race Show. Tell me what do you guys think of the race in the comment section down below. I uh, will try to post other videos later on in the week, and I might have a special video coming out around Thursday or Friday. But until next time, I'm Jake Arst from NASCAR on MVK, and I'll see you guys in the next video.